again, and welcome to Match Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I got all my F's out before the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, happens. It does. Sometimes it just I'm just uh, like this. And yeah. I just came from a, a um, fact check call with the Boston Globe. There's a big story coming out. Uh, so that was interesting. It's yeah. always interesting to sort of see what they ask. The process or, and how they do things. and all or, that. or like what they remember from an interview. Yeah. I mean, I think she was doing a little bit of background as well. But... Um, uh, like the thing that stood out to her, I, I probably had a two hour interview with yeah. her up at Pork Fest. And so this is sort of the follow up from there was that I called the Cato Institute Stato, like statists. Yeah. And I was like, really? That was the thing you remembered? I was like, I said so many smart things, yeah. but that is what's going to be in the newspaper. Yeah, well, you know. And then we talked actually a little bit yeah. about this idea. I actually sort of felt it at Freedom Fest as well, where, you know, uh, liberty forward people or libertarians mm. or free staters in New Hampshire or whatever, you know, we get a bum rap sometimes. But here's the thing. Everyone else is writing white papers about how these ideas are supposed to work. And it's yep. like really easy to be in an ivory yep. tower and to be like, hypothetically, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Whereas... We're doing it in practice, yeah. and that means it's human action, and it's hard. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, we, in, just in legislative efforts, because that's what most of this, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, you know, there's so many people who are like, oh, I don't vote, and I don't like the government, so I don't get involved, and I'm like, okay, but they are the ones who set the rules, you know, when that's just part of our existence. So the best way to change the way something's being done is to change the rules, which means you have to imp either get involved in the legislature or have an influence over the legislature. Um, I was reading something this morning, not that it was surprising to me, but all of, well, all, both, and potentially three, um, GOP gubernatorial candidates are all, um, say they would support universal school choice in New Hampshire. Oh, that's so. Cool. I mean, but these are the things that, ha you know, like that's not an easy thing to take on. You can't just jump from A to Z. You got to kind of go to B and then to D and then maybe back to C and then to Q. So we've tried. But here's the thing. I think that when we're going from A to Z, you get to Z because some people are willing to say Z. Right. And the I thing is, disagree. no one ever gives the the hard work. Mm. It's all hard work, actually. Yes. I will say it's all hard. It's hard to serve. It's hard to write the bills. It's, it's hard, hard to, to promote the bills. bills. It's hard, hard to run for office. And it's hard to be the outlier saying the unpopular things. Mm -hmm. Ask me how I know. <laughs> and... Um, and the thing is just there's never any credit that's given to that, right? So so the outliers are here. Uh, it gets pushed, pushed, pushed. No one is going to go, oh, 20 years ago, Carla, when you were saying all well, schools should be privatized and people yeah. were throwing bricks through your yeah, house, I know. you know, hey, well done. Now we have that and everyone's better off because yep. everyone can read and write again and do math and two plus two is four. Yeah, always four. All of that, right? So it is, it is hard, but... Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I just that was something I had printed out just to remind me that, that I was like, oh, well, and that incrementalism thing is, um, and sometimes we do it wrong, and you kind of have to go back and fix it, which leads me well, to the Joe the, Kelly Levasseur yeah, thing. Yeah, because a, a right? good example. I mean, a couple examples in this this topic. Um, safe stations started out as a good idea. People should be able to go for help, and then it sn it changed and it morphed. And now it's really kind of attracted a bad element. Instead of helping people that are already here, we're bringing in more people. So, so, no. so first of all, there was a geography aspect, right? It's like we should help the people in our communities yeah. that need help, but we shouldn't really be creating programs that attract deadbeats from other places exactly. to come take advantage of our programs. Um, oh. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and I thought it was really funny when we left the show here last week, we left on a bit of a, like, you know, we were talking about the homeless yeah. and then kind of like rushed it at the end. But I thought it was interesting. I was driving home and a, as far as I can tell, it looked like a clean needles van. Uh, at, past me. Is it the, the at one with the big letters? Because that's the drug addiction of 
so so city employee guy the, yeah the, the so addiction so, prevention guy who makes so, you know a hundred thousand dollars so so i think it must have been that it's but, parked down here but but really what struck me was it had words to the effect i wrote it down in my book which of course i don't have here so that's of no use but it said something like um because we deserve community too or something i mean it was it, it was those words yeah, or that yeah. sentiment and kind of on the truck and it really rubbed you the wrong just yeah. kind of rubbed me the wrong way because i was like it's it's this like entitlement feeling where it's like you should value us like how dare yes. you judge and us I you don't... should value us but i'm like but you're not valuing mm-hmm. yourself and you're not valuing mm-hmm. us because here's the thing if you want to tent in a park where I walk my dog. I don't want my dog eating your poo to- toilet nope. paper. Nope. Start there. So so clean up after yourself. Two, it's sort of like, um, well, if this is the public space, then as a part of the public, your duty or your responsibility or whatever isn't that you just get to mess it up. Right. It's to be a good part of the public, right? right? To actually contribute. So, hey. Pick up around you, maybe. Like, if you're going to live in the corner of the park, there shouldn't be any litter in the park. At all. Because you've got... You or know, you literally shouldn't be looking at me holding a trash bag, trying to get the poop paper out of my dog's mouth, right. and kind of be like, yeah, what? You know, I'm like, so we can all do better. On to the... <laughs> we definitely can. Um, so Joe Lavasser, who's an alderman at large here in Manchester, um, he's brought forth a proposal to strike some language out of the city's ordinance. This is language, just so you know, that was added in 2021. And I want to do a little bit of education here because, you know, you doubt yourself and you're like, wait, what? So the ACLU likes to say that everybody's got the right to stand on the sidewalk and do all that. And, 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 okay. and it, the, the language that was added to the ordinance was added because we were afraid, the city, we, was afraid that the ACLU would sue if we didn't do it this way because the ACLU was involved in a lawsuit someplace else in one. So, so uh, just to interrupt, so this was a Ninth yes. Circuit decision, which means it came out of California yep. and that the Western Districts, which means it's a crappy case that really right. has nothing it, to do with people in New Hampshire. In the Ninth Circuit Court, because I was like, oh, I was curious where exactly. Ninth Circuit Court is binding for states Alaska, Arizona, California, Hawaii. See, I do know things, uh, people. Right. <laughs> Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. So literally the left coast. Right. And and in that decision, which was a bad decision, they basically said that, oh, there were no property rights on public land. However. Right? And, and so they were like, oh, you can never trespass on public land, was basically the gist, right? Of which like, is interesting because Los Angeles, which last I checked, was in the, is ninth, in the ninth district. So is San Diego. San, Los Angeles' uh, city ordinance says there are no person shall obstruct a street, sidewalk, or other public right of way by sitting, lying, sleeping, or storing, using, maintaining, or placing personal property in a manner that impedes passage, by sitting, lying, sleeping, or storing, using, maintaining, or placing personal property within 10 feet of any operational or utilization. So I'm saying they've implemented very strict, they are actually in the ninth court, ninth district. Now, so the other thing, of course, so what happened was our ACLU of New Hampshire kind of went to our city yeah. people and, and they said, were like, oh, hey, warning, well, warning. if you try and put these ordinances in place, we're going to sue you. And the city was like, well, we don't want to get $250,000 or a million dollars in legal fees. So, okay, fine. But then the irony is, right, how come they could remove them from the federal courthouse where everyone well, because was... we're picking and choosing right so, so it's also not consistently being so applied. part of Le- so part of lavasser's thing is he references um a state rsa okay 
Uh, RSA 23658, camping restricted. No person shall pitch a tent or place or erect any other camping device or sleep on the ground within the public right-of-way or on public property unless permission is received from the governing board of the governmental authority having jurisdiction over such public right-of-way or property. So state law already says you, in order to camp in Veterans Park, you, you must get permission. permission from the city of Manchester to do so. So if the ACLU were to sue, they'd probably have to sue the state because the state is the one actually who says you have to do this. Now, so that's an RSA and that's a law. That's then a state the law. the city has Has the public camping ordinance. And right, it used to say, I believe, or what Lavasser would like it to say now is the Manchester police shall enforce this camping section only when the individual is on public property, which basically says we're not, we can't force private property. That's a different, that's trespassing. Right. And what happened in 2021, 2021. was they had added language that There's basically said you can only, uh, the police can only remove the people if there's no shelter. If there's an available, available overnight sh shelter. shelter. Uh. And and that seems to be where the disconnect is yes. happening because now everyone's saying, well, well we don't have enough shelter, shelter space so up. I can camp in the park. And I don't think that's, the, that's not the, that was not the intended effect. Now, equal, unintended consequences. Equally stupid. I, okay, I feel for the police. Like the police chief is like, yeah, we need to change the language because we can't do our job. Fair. But what's equally stupid is writing them a $250 citation is not solving anything Why? because they're never going to pay and that citation. And, and actually, the article yesterday, in fact, just like straight up said that. I was reading part of it to Louis as we were having our coffee, and he was like, Why are they giving them citations? That is like literally insane. Right. Because none of them are going to pay it. Well, it just goes into the system, worse, and we're just wasting but, money and time. And we're making believe that we're doing right. it. Right. And even worse, so. It's delusional. Um, Actually, definitionally delusional. Freedom Movement New Hampshire, which is the organization that um, Brittany Ping and Victoria Sullivan and Marion Ward are involved in the faith based, they're t basically housing 25 men, right? To get them from rehab to reality. Oh, nice, okay. Um, and that's all nonprofit. So nobody's earning $100,000 income to do this. They're just doing it because we need to move people from the rehab process to the life process. Anyways, um, they were, they posted a uh, thing on Facebook. Um, there's one gentleman who wrote a, he wrote a note and he said, you know, he needs to, he doesn't have a driver's license. He was never taught to drive. He's like 26 or something. He, where, his growing up environment didn't allow, that. allow for that. So okay. he doesn't know how to drive. He has no driver's license. He knows he needs this to be able to continue down the path toward normalcy. But it, he, but in order to pay, he'd have to pay for the driver's ed course, which I asked and I don't have an answer yet about like, well, could somebody, as an adult, does he actually have to take driver's ed like a child does? Or Probably. can he just learn to drive and take a test? Um, and the second thing was he's got a ticket for littering <laughs> that he has to pay before he can get a driver's license. And like Victoria posted, she goes, so really the city's going to try to collect a $400 or a $200 fine for littering rather than help this individual move towards normalcy and i'm like yeah we do get caught up in weird little kinks in the process i think well but but that by its very nature is the problem with the process right but that's why i'm personally a big proponent of writing down as little few rules as possible yeah. right because well, sometimes so, so, you put extra details and then the details come back to bite well you. the details come back to bite you you uh neglect to get the uh unintended consequences or you have these idiotic ordinances that what was that word salad tammy we just started reading yeah, right it's just then you get uh the the courts start to do things like saying well including actually means not including yes. and not including actually that means it, including right, because if you list off three so, things so it, it, it usually it, means those three things and they say well it didn't say the fourth thing so, so it's literally nonsensical so what joe kelly is basically suggesting is that we take out the, the language we had that we go put back in to in 2021 and we just go back to what we have and, and then i think we should you know uh, uh, apply the rules yep and then you know if the aclu wants to sue I think that we, then, then we go down that road when we get we, there because we, we see what happens in 2000 i was reading somewhere and i 
got three million articles here. But in 2018, oh, I know what I was. I was reading a really interesting article that Carol Robito wrote on Manchester Ink Link about um, ways to deal with the homeless and different things. And I don't even remember what the whole gist of the thing was, but I think she said in 2018, there was something like 360 homeless, and now it's like 540. So you look at it and you're like, wait, or maybe that was 2021 to now. Whatever it is, it's like we're not going in the right direction. I mean, just coming here every day, I see the same people and I think, okay, is somebody actually reaching out to that specific individual or are these people making $100,000 a year just like driving around in the van? Because there's an old man, he, he looks almost like he's not functional. There is an old man who sits in a chair and has a wheelchair next to him with all sorts of stuff and there's trash everywhere. Mm, at on, the Cumberland on, on No, this is on um, <laughs> when you get oh, off we. the highway um, at like Queen City from 293, oh, okay. right in that median. But I mean, the poor man looks either, I don't, he's either completely out of his mind on drugs or he's just so old and incapacitated. But I'm like, why is that guy sitting there? Then there's the guy over here when we come in that sits in front of like Cesario's next to the Yeah, so they're they're a bunch of regulars and and it's kind of like, so so how do we... Right, because how... Because can't we take... Because it's literally like a job. Like the guy downstairs here on Elm Street, I I see him every week. Well, and right. there's a guy same spot, same notes. I was same... not. There was a guy today sitting on the corner of um, Elman Granite, and I think I've talked to him before. But I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, so you're kind of clean. You look clean. You know, like that. You hear all these reasons why they can't get jobs, and if it's the same guy. He doesn't look the shelters, which I can't blame him. He's kind of a loner, kind of doesn't fit in with a lot of people. But he's but he also mentioned that he had been homeless in other states. So I'm thinking, so this is your life. You there's you know like we all don't want to get up and do any like I want somebody <laughs> else to come and clean my house and mow my lawn so that I can just sit on my butt and drink tea and read on Facebook and all the things will just happen around me but the reality is is that's not how life works we have to make an income so that we can buy the food you know you have to you there this is called being an adult in our society and sometimes I think we look at some people and we're like yeah but Joe doesn't fit in I don't know if there was ever an option. I mean, so it's interesting because uh, de Tocqueville, so now I'm back in the 18th century somewhere, I think, or 17th even, I don't remember. But, uh, you know, he was this French philosopher and he came to America way back in the day. And according to his writings, when we had less government, there was actually less poverty because people actually... Could figure it out. Well, because you had to hustle, right? right? Like you got to get your food. It's like if you don't work, you don't eat, right? So it's kind of like we, we've actually become quite uh, – these are problems of the riches, right? right. Like, like like society – I mean, you know, we have uh, chronic health diseases because of too much sugar and corn. Like we are sick because we're fat mm-hmm. and we eat the wrong things, right? But those are luxurious. Right. I mean, we don't to, need to, it be- for everyone to be chronically sick because they're munching on sugar is like a rich world problem, yeah, that's right? Not a, yeah. And so we kind of see all of this, and it becomes a malaise, I think, where it's just well, when I mean, you make it acceptable, people it, are like, we, we're uh, naturally over the lazy. Years, I mean, I've definitely <laughs> seen, and, and this, this is just, it becomes the same thing. I'm sure if you talk to people who are, li- you know, like actually living in really bad situations about who's considered dis- not able to take care of themselves and not, you know, like I have a friend who, from high school who um, is a doctor in someplace in Africa, Nairobi, maybe. I don't know. It's it's a bad, it's, oh, in the Sudan. It is in the Sudan. Okay. He's like in the mountains of the the doesn't matter. It begins with an N. The mountains, he's like... The, Nigeria? No. Um, Niger? We'll come okay. <laughs> um, but it's where all the... There's all civil war and everything. And it's been on it, okay for the last few years. But I mean, the things he's dealing with every day with people coming in from, you know, bombs and going off and whatnot. And those people and how hard they work compared to the people in our country. Because over the years... I don't care if it sound if it's not the friendly thing to say. There are way too many people who are considered disabled. And I think it slaps in the face of somebody who is actually disabled. Well, again, this is an incentive structure, right? right? So and here's a really really simple way to explain it. I think they did an episode of Bull S 
on uh, on TV, uh, Penn and Teller did. Um, so it's the the handicap. Yep. Plate, uh, plate yep. for the thing. So like my mom had a, a really bad stroke many, many yep. years ago. She has one. Yep. She doesn't actually drive anymore. And then she won't let my dad use it, use it unless she's in which the is, car. Which is the, what, how it's meant. Right. But now everyone else... The other person just does, does. use I've got it, the super right? secret pass and I can park wherever I want. But what they actually found, what Penn and Teller found, I think they looked statistically. And after those cards, the the hand, handicap accessible yeah. tickets were made available. Like you can actually see, see it right. Oh, everybody's now out. Because people are like, oh, well, oh, I, well, I can get better parking. Right. So I'm just going to, you know, see if I but can. I mean, we, it get seems this. like more and more and more. And it's, oh, it's not just like this year or last year. This is just, you know, over my entire lifetime. More and more, you see too many young, able bodied looking people paying for their groceries with food stamps. You know, like when I was 20 some years old, I can, re- there are times in my life I can remember, I'm sure you can relate to. You know, like, okay, I got $6 to last me for another oh, 10 days, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go buy three pounds of pasta, and we can buy one <laughs> stick of butter. We're going to buy a carton of cigarettes right. and hope the coffee lasts. No, but you know, like, you picked, and you just made the, you had change. You were like, right? and I got yeah. 42 yeah, 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 cents yeah. here, and I, yeah, I have to buy dish detergent, you know. But, but also now, those hardships in some ways are things. character building and they because make you, like, I, I don't want to do, be, no. live like that. I want so to So I get a little annoyed when I watch people live off of other people because there is but no such Terry, thing as a free lunch. We all know this. Here's, here's the reality is, though, I think we are in a shifting we're in a massively shifting time. Like we're on the epic of something. Either we're about to be taken over by the aliens, but 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 there's this technology thing. So we've talked about this before, where I said one time I was waiting on the plane, and you know they had the seats on the yeah. back of the airplane, and I looked down the aisle. Uh, I was waiting for the loo, and I was like, "Wow, there's not one person on this airplane watching the same show, right?" right. And then if you extrapolate that, that means that 20 years ago, if you you and I would watch the same Seinfeld episode, yep. the, same, the time same time and space, right? Uh, that's right. important. And then we had a shared common experience yep. that we could then talk about at the water mm. cooler or whatever, right? Yeah, you right? went to work the next day saying, oh my God, did you see the Seinfeld, Seinfeld episode? Seinfeld or this was funny or whatever, right? Well, so we had these massive shared experiences. What the decentralization of technology has done is we've taken that away. Now, for the people who like to control information, it's right? Great it's great it's, it's been, no, it's been incredibly oh. hard for them, right? Yes. Because if you had a centralized message, you, you could, could be like, Everyone, everyone watched that so we can frame it this way. Therefore, we can use it. Right. But now no one has a common shared experience. Very Mm -hmm. few things. Live shows, sporting events. Except for all the people Um, watching this on Facebook Live right now. Yes. Uh, Thank you to our hundreds of fans. (laughs) Um, But but I think that that kind of stuff is part of this weirdness Mm. that we're seeing right so people have become super polarized and then within those polar or decentralized and then within that because of social media people have figured out how to target those and then kind of preach to them and then pit them so there's very little common human experience and a lot of like small and then pitting those against each other and so we are just I mean, I think the robots are coming, right? Like, like AI is going to change the job landscape. You know, FedGov is talking about print, uh, doing this digital currency. And I think, sadly, even though we're like, oh, we don't think people should be on EBT and yeah. blah, blah, blah. I think we're moving to a model mm-hmm. where realistically, I mean, and I don't mean this as a diss, but if you don't work and someone's paying for your lunch, aren't you a slave? Yeah. Like, who, who owns you? Like, what? what well, like, I what don't is know. that or is scenario? It the other way around? Or are we the slaves because we're the ones working to feed them? Well, this is the well, this is the question, right? But then I was like, okay, if no one very few people in the world actually understand money, monetary policy, hmm. where it comes from. I forget if it was Ford or someone said way back, he was like, if people understood how banking worked and yeah. how much we're like you over, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. So they have a vested interest in most people not understanding this. But maybe 
I mean, maybe it's just, pff, that's how it's going to be. Like, uh, we're going to have this imaginary money system, and people are just going to sit at home and consume and play co computer games and, I don't know, eat sugar till they die. So... <laughs> If you want Sorry. to get out and get away from the sugar and go out and spend some time outdoors in a in your community or in a neighboring community, um, this Saturday, August 5th, is that correct? 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, is that right? Saturday, August 5th, We Heart West is ho hosting We Heart Wildflowers. Yep. That is at the um, Community Gardens, which is located at 75 Parkside Avenue. I think it's Avenue. Yep, and they um, just finished the pergola oh, and, and thank did the you, packing. Thank and you to Timber and Stone for stepping up. and um, Timber and Stone and, and Patrick yeah. Binder, Mari yeah. Binder, Louis yeah. Collitz. Uh, they, they all went really, in there. They uh, all, you know, spearheaded it, and I, I they do great work. And it looks work. really pretty. Um, um, that's from great. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and if you want more information about that or the event that's coming up in September, you can go on Facebook or you can go to We Heart West with heart all spelled out, weheartwest.org, and see all sorts of things that they're doing to improve the lives of people living here in West in our west side of the world, West Manchester. West um, Manchester. <laughs> that's about it. It'll be interesting to see. If, just so you know, on that language, um, the alderman voted to table it last night, but I don't know if that it wasn't like receiving file. It was to table because I think they want to look more at the LA and San Diego ordinance changes to see if what they should do i don't know so we'll see oh um, uh, i'm sure we'll talk about it more um, oh and i was gonna say well done Lori ortolano oh, that's a name you guys have heard before yep. right to know new yep. hampshire the judge decided this week and issued sixty four thousand yep. dollars against the city of natura for their nonsense persecution yeah. and she still doesn't people. have the and the things that she asked no. for in her 91 um, request. but Go it's figure. very unusual for courts to actually allocate attorney's fees yep. so that is a big yep. big win for the Congrats citizens of the granite state yeah people because you know what if we don't know what the government's doing we can't hold them that's accountable right. on that note that's all we've got we'll be back next i'll be back next week you might not be here um who knows um that's all we got if you got any questions emails that all that stuff uh, manstalk at gmail.com otherwise have a great week bye guys bye